So the question today is how do you create the perfect 3D render of your Minecraft creations? Yo guys, my name is Jurocroft and welcome to another Minecraft related video. Today we're going to be covering one last quick tutorial before we jump on to some other building projects. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can create a 3D render of your Minecraft world. All this is done thanks to a program called Chunky. Yes, download links will be available in the description below and just as a side note, don't forget that the closing date for the Snow Globe building contest is on the 30th of November. So if you guys still want to participate you can still find the details again in the description below so apart from that let's jump straight into the tutorial video where I'm going to be creating a 3d render of kingdoms of Greymane my first ever and still ongoing minecraft project Right guys, so when you start the program, you're going to have a small window called Chunky Launcher. This is pretty basic stuff, don't worry too much about it, don't stress. Um, this is pretty pretty basic, you have the version of Chunky you're going to use as well as checking for updates. But most importantly, you need to make sure that the Minecraft directory leads to your data, roaming and .minecraft folder. And you can change the directory just by clicking on this small icon. Apart from that, you have the memory limit. Now, this kind of depends on how big your render is going to be. If you have a powerful PC, you, sh you don't even have to worry about this. Just put it on max. 16,383 is the max amount over here. Everything else you don't have to worry about. Just click launch. Right then, so once you click on the launch button, you're going to have a new window with the Minecraft world on the left and a bunch of settings on the right. Now by left clicking on the map, you're going to have a selection highlighted in red. Now this is the area you wish to render. You can also uh, left click again to deselect and you can also hold down the shift button to select a much larger area as well as holding down the shift and control button to deselect a large area. You can also zoom in and out using this scale that will give you a much better view and obviously this is a different Minecraft world to the one I wanted to render. As I said I was going to render the Kingdoms of Greymane map so what you need to do is select change world. Now this will give you a list of all your Minecraft worlds saved in your .minecraft folder. Just select the Minecraft world you wish to render and click load selected world. So as you can see, we have a very good bird's eye view of the entire city. So you don't necessarily have to use this tool just to create renders. I sometimes jump on the program just to take a look at the Minecraft map. So what you guys need to do is highlight the area of the map that you wish to render. Now again, this is heavily dependent on your PC. So if you wish to render just a house, you should have no problems whatsoever. But if you do select a massive map like this one, your PC might struggle. It all depends on how much your PC can handle. So once you've selected the entire area you wish to render, all you have to do is click on the 3D render tab and select new scene. Now this in turn will open two more windows. On the left you have a bunch of settings that you can use to adjust the render and on the bottom left of this window it also shows the amount of chunks that are being loaded from your selection. So you kind of need to wait for that to process. Once it's loaded the second window will show you a 3D basic preview of whatever it is that you selected. Now the controls are the same as Minecraft, so you do have to use WASD to move around as well as holding down the left mouse button to change the angle of the camera. Now I have selected a huge, huge map, so it does lag quite a bit, but don't worry too much about it. If you've selected a smaller area, it won't lag as much. Now if you do want to create a high quality render or even just a desktop background, I highly recommend you change the canvas size to 1920 by 1080 which I've already done. Right guys, now I'm going to walk you through the kind of settings I use to create my thumbnails. I'm not going to go too much into detail with all of these tabs because most of the stuff here is really not necessary and I want you guys to know the basics without confusing you. The most important settings are here on the bottom left corner. By pressing on the play icon, this will start the render. Pause will obviously pause its progress and the stop icon will completely reset the render to how it appears now. So as an example, I'm going to press on the play icon and as 
you can see, the image will start to render. Obviously, the longer you let the image process, the better the quality of that photo. You can also change the target SPP, which in simple terms means the higher the target SPP, the longer the image will render for. But either way, once you're happy with the image, you can always simply click on the save current frame icon. Just be sure to click on the pause icon before you actually save the current frame. Right then, so let's jump over to the next tab, which would be lighting. Now, this is really crucial. The two most important tools, or at least the ones you're going to be using the most, is this. Now, this is going to allow you to change the sun's altitude as well as its angle. So if I were to drop down this scale to zero, the sun's altitude will pretty much be at sunset. And as you can see, it will cast a shadow across the entire valley. So these settings are pretty much down to preference. You're going to have to mess around with this a bit and kind of find what works best for you. Now, most of these settings are pretty much self-explanatory. If we jump over to the Sky and Fog tab, you have a bunch of settings where you can add sky transparency, enable clouds, even add some fog density. If you're looking for something spooky, say for the Halloween season, you can even change the color of the fog to green, black, blue, all these settings are pretty much down to preference. If we jump over to the water tab, again, you can change the visibility of the water, change its opacity, even again change the color of the water. So a bunch of really useful tools. The most important one for me though is the camera tab, where there's a useful tool called the projection mode. I tend to use parallel to create my thumbnails and as you can see, it completely changes the angle of the photo, gives you a kind of panoramic um, feel to it, but um, it's kind of difficult to get the right angle. You kind of have to mess about with this a lot. It is kind of laggy. Again, it depends on the size of the render, but this is the same as the previous style. So we can use WASD to move around as well as using the mouse sc scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So once you guys find the right camera angle and settings to use, all that's left to do is to simply click on that lovely green play button to begin processing the image. And that is pretty much how you create a 3D render of your Minecraft creations. I'd love to see how you guys get on over the weekend, so feel free to send me your photo renders over my email address. And as for myself, I'm off for a short break, add me on Snapchat, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This is Jerocraft, over and out.